Hello, my name is Elias Bugufa, and in this video I'll be talking about smart mapping with Arcade. As a quick outline of what I will cover in this video, I will start by explaining what is Arcade, then I will talk a little bit about the advantages of using Arcade and why you should use it. Then I will talk more about Arcade functions and profiles and what these are. Once I finish that, I will be demoing some of the Arcade expressions used for field calculation, labeling features, customizing pop-ups and symbolizing features. Let's start with what is ArcGIS Arcade. Arcade is a simple expression language for the ArcGIS system. It is a focused and intuitive language for creating expressions. With that in mind, this means that Arcade is not a fully programming or scripting language for creating standalone apps, and it's not a replacement for geoprocessing or automation. It is a lightweight language, unlike other languages. There aren't big libraries you need to import to ensure Arcade will work. It runs on everything, whether on desktops, mobile devices, or web apps. Arcade is portable. It's designed with the concept of write once, use everywhere. So you can essentially write your expressions anywhere and use them across the ArcGIS system, whether you are on ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS Online, or applications developed with the ArcGIS Runtime SDK and the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. So why you should use Arcade? Arcade will allow you to enhance your maps with many things you can do out of the box. With Arcade, you can easily perform calculations with layer fields and use the result for label expressions or visualizations. You can either calculate values for existing fields or calculate fields on the fly. This means that when you are making a map and the layer you are using doesn't contain the exact attribute field you need, you can generate that data on the fly without editing the source data, adding a new field, and permanently calculating values. Arcade supports geospatial. It is designed with GIS in mind, which makes it understand concepts that are central to GIS, such as geometries, features, layers, maps, and so on. A very useful fa feature, as we will see in the demo later on. Arcade is case insensitive, so it doesn't matter if you accidentally mix the case of variable and function names. If you write scripts more often, you would probably relate to this and will definitely like this feature. Arcade also supports both single line and multi line expressions. You can write your expressions the way you like. In either way, Arcade will return the last statement in your expression, even if the keyword return is not explicitly used. Now let's talk briefly about functions. Arcade is purposefully simple. It has a rich library of functions, whether these are data, logical, mathematical, geometry, date, and text functions. These functions make it easy to do comp complex calculations. I'm showing a list of available functions categorized by their types. The one that I want to highlight here is the geometry functions that allow you to include GIS concepts in your expression, such as area, buffer, centroid, and so on. The next one I want to talk about is Arcade Profiles. When you write an expression, there is always a purpose behind it, such as customizing labels or defining transparency of symbols. The context where you write your expression is what we refer to as profiles, and that essentially is where your expression is evaluated and understood. There are several profiles. Each profile defines the inputs that are available to the script as global variables and the output expected from the script. In this video, we will demonstrate expressions used in some of these profiles, such as field calculate, labeling, pop-up, and visualization profiles. For the first section of the demo, let's explore how Arcade is used for field calculation. Let me switch into my browser. Here I have the middle super output areas that constitute Swansea local authority area. In this layer, I have the 2019 population estimate for each MSOA. However, I'm interested to calculate the population density per square kilometers. So let's go ahead and calculate this using Arcade. So this is the Arcade interface. On the left side is where you write your expression. 
And then on the right side is where you see a list of global variables, functions, and constants. Let's paste an expression that I already prepared before. As you can see, I created a variable and called it dense. Then I used the first input as the field containing the MSOA population, and that's the one referred by all ages. And then divide this field by the area in square kilometers using the geometry function area. You can specify any different units as you like. Then I used the last round function to limit the decimal numbers to two. As you can see, the result is the number of people per square kilometers, and you can see the decimal numbers are rounded to two. Now for the next field, I'm interested in calculating the northern and eastern of each MSOA centroid. So here I pasted another expression where I will be using the, a combination of the geometry function to import the feature geometry first, then the centroid function to return the centroid point of these polygon features. And then at the end of these two first variables, I wrote y to return the northing and x to return the easting. The last line is just to combine the two variables with a comma to separate them. Note that the coordinates returned from the first two variables depends on the feature coordinate system. In this case, my feature layer is projected in the British National Grid coordinate system, so it will return east in and north in for both the two first variables. As you can see, the result is that both northing and easting are returned and separated by a comma. The next section is about using the labeling profile to customize your labels. Let's switch to the web browser. Here we can see open green spaces in Coventry. This layer is supplied by the audience survey and is available in the Living Atlas. In this scenario, I was interested in labeling the open green spaces by using two fields, the name of the space and its function. As you can see here, we have the name at the beginning of the label and the function of the green space at the end of the label. But you probably have noticed that some features only show the function, while others show both the name of the green space and its function. And if an example of this is this playing field, where it's only showing the function of that green space. Let's explore the expression that I wrote to customize these labels. In this expression, I use the if function where I specify that if the green space name is empty, then I just want the function to be returned. But if it's not, then I want to concatenate the green space name and its function. After using this expression, I noticed that the label is a little bit long, and it may look better if I split it into two lines. So in the second example, I did that, and you can see how it already looks better. To do this, let's see what I changed in my first expression. Here I used the same expression, but I just added the new line constant. And this new line is coming from the constants list where you can actually use these constants to uh, format how your labels are going to look like. And the new line constant here just splits the labels into two lines. So as you can see, not only you can show two fields in your labels, but you can also format them into different lines. In the next section, I will be demonstrating multiple examples to show how pop-ups can be customized with Arcade. Let's switch into my web map. 
In this map, I'm showing current weather and wind station data layer from the Levin Atlas. In the pop-up window of the origin layer, I can see different weather information. But if you notice, the temperature is presented in Fahrenheit. And I want to see this in Celsius degrees instead. However, since I don't own the layer, I can't recalculate the fields to show the temperature in Celsius degrees. So what I did in my modified layer is I used an arcade expression to convert the units from Fahrenheit into Celsius degrees. And I used this in my pop-up window as shown here. Let's explore the expression that I wrote. As you can see in the first line, I just used a mathematical expression to convert the units from Fahrenheit into Celsius degrees. And in the second line, I used the round function to round the decimal numbers into one decimal number. In the next map, I have the UK historic earthquakes supplied by the British Geological Survey in the Levin Atlas. If I open the pop-up window of the original layer, you can see that the location name in the title is all uppercase. I needed to fix this so only the first letter is capitalized. In my modified layer, as you can see, I already fixed this with using arcade expression. So let's explore the arcade expression that I wrote here. Simply, I use the proper function to fix this issue. The proper function takes any words as inputs and capitalize the first letter of them. You can specify to either capitalize all the words inputted or only the first word in a sentence. Okay, in this map, I have the middle super output areas covering the city of Newcastle. In this scenario, I'm interested in summarizing three main information related to open green spaces in each MSOA. First, total number of open green spaces. Second, number of those green spaces considered as play spaces. And third, a list of five largest open green spaces. The MSOA layer doesn't have this information as fields, so to show this in a pop-up window, the layer needs to communicate with the Open Green Spaces layer in the Living Atlas and returns the required information. Here I clicked on one of the MSOAs, and we can see there are 40 Open Green Spaces, from which six are play spaces, and then a list of the five largest Open Green Spaces are, is displayed. To do this, I use three arcade expressions that calculate this information on the fly and display it. Let's explore these expressions. So in the first expression, I used the feature set by portal item to import the open green spaces. Layer then used a combination of intersects and count functions to return the number of open green spaces that intersect with my MSOA layer. In the second expression, I almost used the same uh, expression as the first, but I added the filter function to import open green spaces with the function play space. In the third expression, after importing the open green spaces layer, I used the order by function to order the features that intersect with my MSOA boundary and I ordered them by the area, then use the top function to only return the five largest green spaces. After that, I used a loop to create a list of these open green spaces. The next map is centered in Liverpool and contains wards, boundaries, and the geolitex retail points layer from the Living Atlas. In this scenario, I'm interested in summarizing the total number of supermarkets in each world and a list of available supermarkets and their numbers. As you can see in my pop-up window, that's how it will look like at the end. So now let's have a quick look at the expression I used. As you can see in the first section, I imported the geolitex layer from the map and created a few variables that I will use later in my expression. In the second section, I wanted to retain only the supermarkets that intersect with the selected word boundary.
And then in the third section, I created a loop where I specified that for each supermarket intersected, add one to the total number of supermarkets variable, and that for each feature intersected that doesn't exist in my SM dictionary, populate the dictionary with the supermarket name and the value one. If the, if the supermarket already exists, then add another one to the value. And then the last section here in my expression is just formatting the end result and how I want it to look like in the pop-up window. The next map contains the life jacket survey layer supplied by the Royal National Lifeboat Institution in the Levin Atlas. In this scenario, I just wanted uh, to get the spatial reference for each survey location. So as you can see in the pop-up window, you can see the British National Grid reference, uh, the eastern and northern of each survey, and some general survey information. To get the PNG reference, I had to develop a script to, to determine the grid reference of the survey point. Let's have a look at the script. At first sight, it may look a little bit complicated, but in a nutshell, I used Arcade here to calculate the northing and easting of each point, then extracted the British National Grid reference from these using a set of conditional statements and variables. And at the end, I just returned the British National Grid reference. Let's switch back into my slides now. The last section of the demo covers the visualization profile used to customize the symbology of the layers. Let's switch to the web browser. The last example I want to show here is inspired by a blog written by Emily Miriam from Esri Inc. In this example, I have a point layer of recent tropical storms. The storms are symbolized based on the wind speed at each location and follows the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale to split storms into different categories. In this scenario, I had the wind speed in one of the fields, so I wanted to categorize the storms based on that, and I also wanted to set the symbol size based on the category of the storm and the scale I'm viewing the data at. To do that, I, create, I created two arcade expressions. Let's explore these. So for the first expression, it imports the wind intensity field and use it in a conditional statement that determines the category of the storm based on the Saffirs Simpson scale. The second expression has two main statements. The first one is a conditional statement to set the size of the symbol by the storm category. And then the second one is to set the symbol size based on the view and scale. Note that the view scale is a global variable that appears when using the visualization profile. And as you can see, the final results show the symbols that will maintain their sizes when zooming in and out in the map, which is quite impressive. So in this video, we explained what is Arcade and why you should use it to enhance your mapping. We touched briefly on Arcade functions and profiles. I felt Arcade was better explained through examples, so I tried to show as many examples as the duration of this video fits. I hope you found this video inspiring and that you will start implementing Arcade in your maps. Thank you for watching.